What would Jesus do? A study of the ministry of Jesus as recorded and shared in our Bibles will show us that Jesus gave us two commandments to be kept and honored. Love God with all your heart, soul, spirit, and life. Love all people as you would want them to love you. When we measure our lives and the lives of those who claim to be Christian, then these two measures are the ones that should be applied. Jesus said, A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this all men, mankind, will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. At some point, we must evaluate rules and traditions against what God really wants. The Old Testament is full of rules and regulations, many of which are absurd today and not considered valid. There are many detailed rituals for purification so that people are worthy of entering the temple. Wearing mixed fiber clothing was an abomination. The eating of certain foods, including shrimp, were abominations before God. A disobedient child is to be stoned to death. Leviticus is full of rules, regulations, and procedures that no one follows, and many more that few follow. There are a few that are pulled out and clung to in isolation with no attention to adjacent passages. This is problematic. I have been accused of picking and choosing which parts of the Bible I believe, and yet those who make this accusation do exactly what I am accused of doing within the same book of the Bible, Leviticus. This is hypocritical. If one believes that the whole and complete Bible must be taken as is without interpretation, then they must live what they believe and follow every rule recorded in Leviticus. My belief is that the book of Leviticus is a historical record of the rules regulations and traditions that the Hebrew people constructed within their society. I believe the importance of this record is to show how far mankind went in distorting God's true plan for man and building the case for Jesus to come and deliver them. The book of Leviticus is not a rule book for living today and should not be taken as such. For those who would disagree, I challenge them to live by each and every word written and not pick and choose those they feel are still good and discard those they feel are no longer valid. Follow them all or do not use them against others. The religious leaders in Jesus' day were more concerned about rules and following the letter of the law than they were about people. They tried to trick Jesus when they asked him, Which is the greatest commandment? And he replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and a second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All other commandments will be taken care of if you follow these two. This infuriated the religious leaders of Jesus' day as they were full of prejudices and rules that lived out as unfair treatment of many in the name of God. Jesus clearly gave us two rules to follow in our everyday lives. Some fundamentalist Christian organizations are the Pharisees and Sadducees of today. These organizations that work harder to keep people out than bring them in are not following the example of Christ and his two guiding rules. How can you claim to love Jesus and hate people? We are called to love our neighbors. When you love, you care. And when you care, you do not hate or act with hatred towards people or work to diminish their worth and lives. Repeatedly telling someone they are going to hell for something they did not choose is hatred and untrue. I am haunted by the young man telling his story in a documentary, Through My Eyes, where he related the sharing with his church family that he knew he was gay. 
people in the church, including pastors, began to berate him and proclaim he was hell-bound and must repent. The young man was confused as he did not know what it was for which he needed to repent. He had not done anything other than share with his church friends that he knew he was gay. Knowing you are gay cannot be a sin. What happened to the two rules of Jesus? When we listen to the outright lies and misuse of the real message from God and Jesus from some of American society and politics, you would have to acknowledge that some politicians and leaders in our world are also modern-day Pharisees. What happened to loving your neighbors and treating others with respect? Unfortunately, many churches and people who claim to be Christian have little interest in actually doing what Jesus would do in any situation. WWJD, what would Jesus do, needs to be really asked and really followed. This has nothing to do with a denominational theology that puts Jesus and God in a box. God is not in that box that humans have made. Narrow yet simple. Matthew chapter 7 verses 13 to 14. Jesus left a simple message. The people before Jesus had messed up God's message. The people after Jesus have messed up God's message. The variable that seems to have messed things up before and after and still today is people. A flaw in humans, whether we define it as human nature or free will, is to think more highly of human intellect than should be thought. Humans have a long history of egotism, prejudices, and self-righteousness. Humans in the religious organizations and churches today need to get out of the way and let God be God. The teachings and the modeled life that Jesus lived that is recorded in the four Gospels is sufficient. It may be narrow, but it is simple. Simple enough for humans. If people do not try to take over God's responsibility and push God to the side and out of the picture. You will know. Matthew chapter 7 verses 15 through 23. Jesus started out this particular message by providing a way for us to find the true followers of Jesus. He described who the blessed were and showed us how to find them. We will know them because of their attitudes of being. Fruits. Jesus gave us a list of the qualities and traits that would be found in his true followers at the beginning of this message. Near the end, he described the evidence that would be found from the lives that they live while following him. People that are truly following Jesus will bear fruit, good fruit. But what happens when we live God's way? He brings gifts into our lives, much the same way that fruit appears in an orchard. Things like affection for others, exuberance about life, serenity. We develop a willingness to stick with things a sense of compassion in the heart, and a conviction that a basic holiness permeates things and people. We find ourselves involved in loyal commitments, not needing to force our way in life, able to marshal and direct our energies wisely. Legalism is helpless in bringing this about. It only gets in the way. Among those who belong to Christ, Everything connected with getting our own way and mindlessly responding to what everyone else calls necessities is killed off for good, crucified. Since this is the kind of life we have chosen, the life of the Spirit, let us make sure that we do not hold it as an idea in our heads or a sentiment in our hearts, but work out its implications in every detail of our lives. That means we will not compare ourselves with each other as if one of us is better and another worse. We have far more interesting things to do with our lives. Each of us is an original. This comes from Galatians chapter 5, 22 through 26 from the message. The called. While the poor in spirit, those who mourn, the meek, 
those who hunger and thirst, the merciful, the pure in heart, the peacemakers, the persecuted, and the insulted are the ones who are called. We all are called to become these people who exercise these qualities while living and interacting with others. With these qualities, we are called to be the salt, light, and fulfillment of God to the people around us. In the famous and significant Sermon on the Mount, Jesus shared his message to a large crowd. While this message was tailored to the people who were there, this message still applies to us today. We all have to strive to have the attitudes of being that will provide a map for others that are searching for peace and a real experience with the authentic God of inclusive love. We all have to be salt and light to the world. Not so salty that we ruin the message and not lacking any salt so that there is nothing of substance. Being a light by modeling is important. Light does not speak. It simply illuminates. We are called to shine the light of the teachings of Jesus to the world that we encounter. When Jesus used salt as a metaphor, he knew what he was doing. It is a metaphor that is much more complex than just skimming past it while reading the gospel and studying the Sermon on the Mount. Salt is very versatile, useful, and important. It was likely even more important during the time of Jesus' ministry because they did not have the scientific community like we do with our plethora of chemicals and inventions. If we are indeed to be the salt of the earth, then we need to be very versatile, useful, and important to the people in our world. We cannot be so stingy with the salt that it cannot be detected. We should not be so salty that we have turned everyone off and have become ineffective to the gospel of Christ. Jesus called his disciples and the people in the world into a deeper walk with him. The recorded message of Jesus calls us into a deeper walk with God and a sharing of God's inclusive love. What would Jesus do? A study of the Gospels and specifically the actual words and actions of Jesus are more than just clues.